Okay, we just want to talk about some of the terminology that's used to assess uh, the effectiveness of AI and which you'll read about in the literature. First term is conception rate and uh, literally uh, if, when you're using this term it means the percentage of oocytes or eggs which during estrus would be fertilized and develop into a zygote after insemination. In a practical sense if semen arrives at the right time and the and eggs are present then fertilization rates can be in the order of uh, 90% so quite high so in, in that sense conception rate um, it can be quite high. The problem is we don't really know how many eggs are really fertilized uh, we can't see it we can't measure it with um, conventional techniques so usually when we're pregnancy testing six eight ten weeks or whatever after insemination and we say well the conception rate was 50 percent or 40 percent or whatever we're not saying that 40 percent of eggs were con um, fertilized what we're saying is that there are of those cows that are inseminated 40 percent etc are diagnosed as pregnant so this is the way that the term is more commonly used it's not the literal meaning of the term um, so it's really the percentage of cows inseminated that are diagnosed as pregnant following artificial insemination and typically the, the rates of conception rates lie in the range of 30 to 60 percent but it's, it's quite variable uh, depending on a, a number of circumstances <clears throat> if you want to calculate conception rate using it in this sense it's really the number of inseminations uh, that result in a pregnancy divided by the number of animals that were inseminated multiplied by 100. So that's the standard way in which the term conception rate is used. Another term that's used is pregnancy rate. Now pregnancy rate can be used, when people use the word pregnancy rate they may actually be talking about conception rate, um, it depends on their definition. Um, other times it refers to the total number of cows that were diagnosed pregnant as a percentage of the whole group that were treated. For example, this could be the whole herd or the group of animals that are given a particular treatment. Um, this can easily be confused with conception rate, which is the percentage of animals that were actually inseminated. When you treat a whole group of cows, like 100 cows, you may not inseminate all of them. So say you treat 100, you might only um, inseminate 90. So pregnancy rate, of those 90 that get pregnant, the pregnancy rate refers to what percentage of all of those cows, 100, got pregnant as a result of that program or treatment. So for example, if you've got 100 cows, um, you inseminate um, 90 and 45 get pregnant, then the conception rate would be 45%, that's 45 of 90, but the pregnancy rate, um, sorry, conception rate would be 45 out of 90 which would be 50 percent the pregnancy rate would be 45 out of 100 which is 45 percent so pregnancy rate equals the number of cows within a herd or a group um, that you select for your analysis diagnosed by the number um, or the percentage of those that got actually pregnant um, divided by the total number of cows in the herd um, and so this this figure can differ from conception rate but it just pays to check with the person, with the author of the document, the reading, just to, to find out what definition they're using because it may vary. Other terminology that's used is the term in calf rate. Um, this is a term that's been used, um, developed within Australia. It's uh, the, the thought was that conception rates and pregnancy rates may not mean much to farmers so that by using the term in calf rate um, it's something that a figure that farmers perhaps can identify with better um, and this is used for example um, commonly with what's called the six week in calf rate or the 12 week in calf rate or the 20 week in calf rate six week in calf rate is the percentage of cows that are diagnosed as being pregnant in the first six weeks of the breeding period so after six weeks of mating how many cows were pregnant and that would be a six week in calf rate other ways it's used it might be the 100 day in calf rate and this is used more commonly with year round calving herds and that's the percentage of cows that are diagnosed pregnant within 100 days of calving. Now non return rate, well, this is again a different term um, this is the percentage of animals that do not uh, return to estrus or they're not detected in estrus following insemination and this is positively correlated with conception rate um, you, what you're assuming is that cows that don't come back in heat or you don't detect them coming back in heat they're in fact he uh, pregnant. 
Now this is not always true because there's a variety of reasons why cows that have been seminated may not come back in heat. For example, they might come back in heat but the farmer may not detect them in heat and assume that they're pregnant. Um, other reasons might be that they're undergoing early embryonic loss so even though you'd expect them to come back in heat roughly 21 days after they've been inseminated um, if that embryo is still viable at that time but subsequently dies then they'll come in heat after that um, embryo dies so non-return rate is usually higher than actual pregnancy rates but it does reflect pregnancy rates it's often used in situations where you, you haven't got pregnancy rate data so the cows haven't been able to be pregnancy tested but you have information on who was inseminated and whether they came back in heat or not after they were inseminated and so companies such as in semen supplying companies, AI companies that don't have access to pregnancy rate data they may have access to when cows are coming back in heat and so that gives them an indication of fertility um, associated with certain batches of semen or with certain inseminators with certain technicians so it's quite a useful um, index that can be used to assess reproductive performance so what you should do now is just have a think about some of these terms and, and let's think about what's the difference between the non-return rate and the pregnancy rate which figure do you think should be higher when would you consider using non-return rate data rather than pregnancy rate data and what's the definition of the term six week in calf rate? So I'll just let you have a think about that and we'll pause for a moment and then um, we'll see how you, how you went. So what's the difference between the non-return rate and the pregnancy rate? Well non-return rates will be higher than pregnancy rates. Non-return rates reflect the percentage of animals that did not come return to estrus after insemination or were not detected in estrus after insemination and that may reflect that will reflect the pregnancy rate but the pregnancy rate will be a much, will be a more accurate assessment of who is actually pregnant non-return rates can be influenced by a number of factors such as the ability of the farmer to detect heat um, the occurrence of early embryonic loss amongst other things which figure should be higher well non-return rates will be inevitably higher than pregnancy rates. When would you consider using non-return rate data rather than pregnancy rate data? When you can't actually pregnancy test um, but you have access to information on when cows are returning to heat and which cows return to heat. What's the definition of the term six week in calf rate? Well, this is the percentage of cows that get pregnant within six weeks of the start of the breeding season. 